What's up, family? It's Caden with Urban Finance. It is Black History Month, my favorite month of the year. All of our videos for this month will focus on black history, but with a focus on economics, personal finance, and inspirational content. Today, we are going to be doing a book review of Black Labor, White Wealth by Dr. Claude Anderson. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to support the page. Leadership. Humans, like all order of life, seek leadership and find it naturally. The power and resources disparity between blacks and whites has caused blacks to have different standards for selecting, developing, and recognizing leadership. Leaders are individuals who can induce others to cooperatively work towards certain goals that represents the values and motivation of both leaders and the followers. The goal of forming new black leadership is to acquire for blacks in this lifetime economic justice, wealth, power, and equal employment of the rewards and benefits of the American dream. Black people are failing at empowering the community because in a competitive society, there are no mechanisms to give voice to unorganized and inarticulate groups. The black community must develop systems and institutions that are focused on developing black leaders. Unless a serious focus is placed on developing black leaders, black people in America will remain uncompetitive in every sphere of influence and power. Point two, unjust distribution of wealth. The root of the problems for black advancements in America is the unjust distribution of our national wealth, power, and resources. Whites own almost 100% of our nation's wealth, power, business, and all levels of government support and resources. This monopoly was created from centuries of exploitation and expropriation of slavery and black labor. A slave life was committed to producing wealth and comfort for their white master. Black people learn very quickly after slavery that unless you have money and power, your freedom is only theoretical. Black people would have a very hard time pulling themselves up by their bootstraps because local ordinances and social sanctions in the North and South restricted free blacks from earning competitive incomes. The socioeconomic inequalities that existed between white and blacks during and shortly after slavery have now become structural problems that are very difficult to dismantle. Point three, doctrine of unequal exchange. The doctrine of unequal exchange is the practice of unbalanced socioeconomic trade in which weaker parties foolishly trade or are tricked into trading their valued goods, services, or properties for money or items of far less value than what the stronger party is trading. It wasn't only Africa's human capital that was being displaced through slavery. During the same time, its material wealth was also being stolen by Arabs and Spanish Portuguese merchants and traded for low value fabric items such as iron brass, rings, religious artifacts, and used firearms. In exchange, Africa gave some of its most valuable commodities such as gold, silver, quality leather, long cotton, art objects, black slaves, and ivory. This massive displacement of Africa's human capital and natural resources weaken West Africa's social and economic institutions. And we wish that we can say that things are different today. In America, we see the same unequal exchange of wealth for things that African Americans do not need, like Jordans, fancy cars, Gucci bags, red bottoms. Blacks also give nearly 100% of their vote to the Democratic Party. They are promised nothing, receive only photo ops, yet have remained loyal to party voters no matter what happens to them. Black people are still exchanging the best of their human capital and resources for little in return. The unequal exchange continues. Point three, the black civil rights movement. While the civil rights movement had many successes, it had four specific flaws that we will call out today. First, our black leadership focused its entire effort on achieving integration. They believe incorrectly that by moving symbols of Jim Crowism 
and gaining access to white society, black people would gain equality. Two, our black leaders failed in dealing with the problems that were caused by Jim Crowism, like the maldistribution and racist control of wealth, power, and resources in America. Three, there are no long-term planned development for where and how black people were to proceed post-civil rights era. Four, our black leaders fails to construct a national network of institution to train new generation of blacks who would assume the mantle of leadership and implement a national plan for black empowerment. The combined effect of these four major failures left black civil rights movement with no place to go, no way to get there, and no leadership to take. Blacks were involved in every aspect of the development of the American nation. We cleared the land and produced the crops. We raised the food and the children of white families. We fought in every war and developed the land expropriated from the American Indians. Black produced the wealth that whites in both the old and new world possessed and claimed to have achieved by the sweat of their brow. Although black people have contributed so much to this country, they have often been systematically barred from experiencing its benefit, except for a few chosen few, often selected by those with power. In essence, black labor exploitation is the foundation of all success in America today. Okay, family, thank you for watching. This concludes our review of Black Labor White Wealth by Dr. Claude Anderson. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Happy Black History Month. And as always, love you and live your best life.